Namaskar and a very warm good morning once again from the Dekho Apna Desh webinar series, dear viewers. Welcome. I hope you had a nice long breakfast and you're ready to watch the tigers go through. Remember I told you the last time when we took you to Bhopal that we were going to walk the tiger country today. And there was so much of the discussion on jeeps and uh, how you can go out into these sanctuaries. Today, we're actually going to do that. But before we do that, I am going to say a small hymn out of the Atharva Ved. The Atharva Ved, the viewers, I'm sure you all know, but for all those who don't, is the fourth of the Vedas, where it says, O Prithvi, thy center, thy navel, all forces that have issued from thy body, Set us amid those forces. Breathe upon us. So why do you think I was referring to this today? Viewers, because we all understand that in these times when COVID struck us and we've all actually gone into a lockdown mode, so many of us have been putting up pictures, have been viewing pictures in WhatsApps and seeing that how when mankind has stepped just that little back, how it has allowed space for flora and fauna to come out and to once again start enjoying the beauty of the globe. Incidentally, as I was researching for today's webinar, a word which we are using in the context of COVID these days, hotspot, came up for reading uh, biodiversity hotspot. I never knew that. There's a concept of a biodiversity hotspot, which is a biogeographic region with significant levels of biodiversity that is threatened by human habitation. You heard me correct. We are the ones that are causing destruction to the biodiversity that our beautiful Mother Earth has. The concept of identifying hotspots in the context of biodiversity was put forth by Norman Myers in 1988. Viewers, almost 2.3% of the land surface of Earth is represented by hotspots. These also comprise of around 50% of the world's most common plant species and 42% of terrestrial vertebrates. Sadly, 86% of the habitats are on verge of extinction due to serious threats posed by climate change, where also I think we are the ones quite a lot responsible for it and human intervention. What we feel good about in India is that we still can preserve, are working towards it. The biodiversity hotspots in India that are identifiable as larger uh, hotspots are the Western Ghats, the Himalayas, the Indo-Burma region, and also the Sundaland, which is part of the Nicobar Islands, declared so a world biosphere in 2013 by the United Nations. We have so much of biodiversity in our country wouldn't it be a pity if we were to walk back and come out of lockdown, but not learn to work together with nature? Viewers, why I started therefore with the hymn from Atharva Ved is that we as a culture, we worship the tree, we worship the mother earth, we worship the cow, we worship the plants. In fact, nature, the Jagato Niveshni, the earth, which is the abode of the whole world, she is mother earth and we are supposed to live in it, coexisting with all the living beings, the plants and the animals. And so today, that's why, while we talk of tourism, but we need to talk of responsible tourism. We, we want to talk to you about the tiger today because the tiger was also dwindling in numbers until in the 1970s, we did not start with Project Tiger. And today bringing to us therefore the trail of the tiger in India is Sandesh Kadur. He's sitting somewhere, I asked him where is he presenting from, he's sitting in a place called Agumbe, which is in Karnataka. It's close to the coast, but up in the mountains. So fascinating. He's a wildlife filmmaker and a conservation photographer. His work has been seen on National Geographic Channel, on the BBC, Discovery, Animal Planet, and his work has also earned him many awards, including the CIWEM, Environmental Photographer of the Year, and he's been nominated for a Green Oscar. We are so happy to have you with us, Sandesh, today to talk to us about tiger tourism and viewers. As I keep saying in all my webinars that we've been doing since 14th April 2020, times of COVID, keep yourself healthy, keep yourself safe, 
We are going to travel very, very soon. But in the meantime, keep enjoying the webinars with us. We'll do some more talking on the issue of sustainability, but after the presentation, uh, we'll start with a video that uh, Vaidehi will bring from Bengaluru, and then Sandesh shall take over the web screen. All yours. Vaidehi, can we have the video? It is a symbol of power as well as beauty also. Oh, it's, for me, it's, a, it's the king of the cats. It's magnificent. It's such a beautiful animal. Oh, it's such a magnificent animal. Spectacular and he's disappearing and I really would love to see him. Likewise, a tiger, I mean, it's the, it's the icing on the cake. I've seen lions in Africa a lot. I've seen predators like polar bears and um, you know, snow leopard, and, and, but tiger still stands out somehow. Tiger is something extremely intense and charismatic and magnetic about this uh, predator, and that's what I think uh, everybody after, and sometimes uh, not in a very positive way, unfortunately. The time I saw Tiger, it was actually a huge letdown. We sort of came across this beautiful animal out in the jungle, and it was just kind of chaos around it. Vehicles, gypsies moving around, people standing up, making a noise, shouting. And it was almost like seeing that animal in a zoo again or in a circus again. It was really disappointing. Um, and probably ruined my first impression of Tiger without a doubt. So, um, good, morning. good morning, Sandesh. Thank you, ma'am, for having me on this uh, wonderful program. I mean, this is a topic that I've always wanted to cover. And a few years ago, we made a video all about tigers and tourism. So, let me see if I can. So, I'm just going to share my screen now. Yes, um, can everyone, can you all hear me? It's all fine. Yes, the audio is fine. We are waiting to see your screen though. Okay, my screen's on now. Share screen. We can still see you and some lovely foliage behind you. Okay, hold on one second. Let's see. Can you see can you see the screen now? No. Not yet. Share screen. So viewers, while um, Sandesh is, you know, figuring out his share screen, I'm sure he will in a moment. Look at the area behind him. Don't we all want to step out and once again feel the breeze? the sky, the fresh air. We've been in a lockdown mode for a while now, but then as a country, we seem to have succeeded. Just a little bit more restraint. And we are sure that we are going to be on top of the virus that has come to infect. Yes, okay, great. Sandesh, we got your screen. Go ahead. Okay, great. Well, thank you, ma'am, for having me on this uh, wonderful program. It's something that's um, been very close to my heart and we made a video uh, many years ago, about eight years ago, I think, on tigers and tourism. And we traveled across the country documenting um, what, what's actually going on. That was the first time that I entered into the world of the tiger and entered into this um, amazing landscape. And I could see both sides of how people are in awe of the tiger and yet at the same time the kind of pressures and then i just had to wonder you know would the tiger survive without tourism and it, it, it would be it would be very hard to think that it could survive on its own so then i realized that we definitely need the tourism revenue the tourism dollars to be coming in and people all over the world are absolutely smitten by the tiger as 
am I? So we already saw this video. I'm going to skip over it. So my own love for tigers and the fascination for tigers uh, dates back to when I started reading books by Jim Corbett, Kenneth Anderson, and all of these amazing hunting stories and man-eating tigers and how Jim Corbett tracks them, goes after them, you know, hunts them down. And as a young teenager, reading these books, it just absolutely fascinated me. As a matter of fact, that's also what I started to do, not hunt them, but start tracking them down with my camera in hand. And that's what I do even now. I spend a lot of time, many hours sitting in quietly in the jungle, waiting for these big cats to show up. And of course, um, uh, tigers have fascinated humankind for, for millennia. And it's not just tigers. The first time I went out to lead my life as Jim Corbett, the first big cat that caught my attention was the leopard. And I saw it on a full moon night and it walked directly under my feet as I was sitting on a tree. And that was the moment I was absolutely smitten by big cats. And I decided that I want to spend the rest of my life documenting them in the wild. And that's what I do now as a wildlife filmmaker. I go around the country documenting uh, not just big cats, but also other wildlife, which I'll get to at the end of the talk. So um, tigers have brought people from around the world to India. It's been on the cover of National Geographic uh, from, from, from way back in the 40s to, uh, to even now. And um, reading the pages on, in the magazine, I was that, you know, I had very little idea about how these tigers uh, are in the wild. And it was only in the pages of these books that I could understand how incredibly beautiful they are. And I decided that that's, of course, what I wanted to do. And not only, and this is much more recent, but tigers have fascinated humankind for millennia. If you look at uh, some of the communities in southwestern India, they show their reverence for tigers by painting them themselves in the stripes of a tiger and dancing from village to village, from temple to temple. And th this just shows how interconnected humans are for generations, for millennia. And not just that, I mean, hundreds of miles away up in the mountains of, of the Himalaya, on the walls of the monasteries, there are these beautiful paintings of tigers. And this is yes, not very different from- The screen is not moving, sorry, I'm butting in, but the screen is not moving. Is that intentional? Because we can only see the first screen. Okay, is it stuck on, what picture yes, is it stuck? it's stuck on the first screen which says Sandesh Kadur Tigers and Tourism. So we haven't been moving okay. the screen, yeah. Okay, I'm, I've been moving it here. Let me start it again from here. So viewers, these are the challenges uh, of our webinars, but we like to bring them in a more authentic fashion. So as I mentioned, Sandesh is sitting up in the mountains. Great, yeah, the, the PPT is back. Yes, now we can see the pictures. Okay, so that was the slide uh, talking about uh, Jim Corbett and that's how that began my fascination for tigers and my journey tracking them. And the first big cat I saw in the wild on my own was a leopard. And you know, you've seen the, the, the tiger on the pages of National Geographic and that of course had me absolutely smitten to follow them. But tigers have fascinated humankind for millennia, as I was describing. Are the slides moving now? Are they moving forward? Yes. Are you yeah. Uh, well, we are still on the slide that has uh, six different pictures in the combat. Oh, no, I'm in uh, Hulibesha already. Resume share. Okay, so you need to move them, I think. They're, they're kind of sort of slow. Okay. Is it on Hulibesha right now? No, so we can see managers of Kumau, My India, Jim Corbett. It's all about Jim Corbett. This is probably the first slide. Yes, 
Yeah, no, we are not getting the screen share. This, yeah, we're getting it back, though we still don't have the picture. Yes. So we I'm are on slide seven ask. now. I'm going to go forward now. Did yeah. it go forward for you? Uh, no, we are on slide seven. Okay. So maybe what I should do is maybe I should just do it like this. Okay, now you can see all the slides, I guess. Yes. Okay. So maybe I'll, I'll go like this. Is that better? Yes. Okay. Okay. So now, we, now I can advance the slides and that. Okay. okay. So this is uh, Huli Besha, where humans show their own intrinsic connection with nature <laughs> yeah, by by painting themselves in the stripes of a tiger, going from temple to temple, and um, and this has been going on for for generations. So the fascination for tigers has been around for millennia. High up in the mountains of Bhutan or in the Himalaya, monasteries are painted with these beautiful, striking uh, paintings on the walls. And this is not very different from what I do now as a wildlife photographer or a filmmaker. I document these big cats with a camera. That's really the only difference. But that fascination for, for big cats has been around for such a long time. And now as a wildlife cameraman, I spend a lot of my time sitting in confined spaces in isolation. And I think many of us are used to now sitting in isolation in our homes for many hours, many days, and sitting in one place. Well, that's what I've been doing for many years now, sitting confined in small, small spaces, waiting for a tiger to show up. And they, are, they don't always show up on time. I mean, they're not like our actors. They have their own schedules, and sometimes it takes me up to a week to even spot a tiger in the wild. And you can see why it's so difficult to spot them. I mean, they are, their camouflage is amazing. And to spot one in their habitat is one of the most amazing things. It's like, a, it's like a feeling of satisfaction when you actually spot one in the wild. This is an image, one of my favorite images from Kaziranga National Park. Kaziranga is not one of the places where um, it's not very popular to go to to see a tiger because that grassland is so tall that it even hides elephants. So to spot a tiger is nearly impossible. So tigers are found across the country in a diversity of habitats from the moist grasslands of Kaziranga all the way across to places like Ranthambore where it's dry deciduous forest, central India, and in the rainforests of the Western Ghats. And here you can see a map that shows you all of the different places where tigers are found across the country. There are 50 tiger reserves across, um, across India. And, um, and India has nearly 70% of the wild population of tigers. So India is the tiger's last stronghold. We have nearly 3,000 tigers spread across 50 tiger reserves. And as you can see, all the way from the south in Kerala, Periyar, Kalakad, Mundantarai, down to up to Bandipur and Nagarhole, and across the Western Ghats into Maharashtra, Madhya Pradesh, you have some amazing places like Bandhavgarh, Pench, Pana, and into Rajasthan, there's Ranthambore. And then you go all the way up to, to the north, past Delhi, there's Corbett, which is another striking landscape uh, with some amazing wildlife, including king cobras. The place where I'm sitting in right now, Agumbe, is probably the hotspot for king cobras. And that's what, uh, uh, that's one of the things I've been filming. But all the way up in Corbett is another place where I've seen king cobras and tigers together, which is quite uh, rare. And then you go across on the map, if you go across to Kaziranga, which is far in the Eastern part of India, 
And now in the foothills of the Himalaya and in the Himalaya, you have an amazing place in Arunachal Pradesh, a place that needs to be protected, uh, which is one of the newest strongholds for the tigers in India. So you can see that these tigers live in a diverse array of landscapes from the mountains to the rainforests to the hot plains of central India. So they're very, they're highly adaptable, but they, they, they can only live here if we can allow them to live here. And that's where we have that power. We, we as humans need to give them the space to survive alongside us. And that's where tourism comes in. That's where the importance of um, people and animals living together. It's difficult because in other parts of the world, there, are, there is no other place in the world where you have such a population of tigers and such a high density of human beings. I can't imagine any country anywhere in the world with a population like 1.3 billion people yet supporting big cats, tigers, leopards. India even has lions uh, and the snow leopard and the clouded leopard. I mean, those are five big cats living in a country with 1.3 billion people. It's not always easy and there is conflict and it's how we resolve conflict that helps keep these tigers alive in the country. Because if we lose them, that would be something uh, that would that would be that would be terrible for all of us. So tourism ha definitely has a role to play in keeping the tiger and keeping the tiger alive in the country. So it's important that these places, these little islands, survive into the next century. And tourism, of course, has increased by leaps and bounds. Um, I remember that when I first started going to some of these places, there was hardly any tourists going to tiger reserves. And now over the last um, 10 years, there's been a staggering uh, rise uh, in tiger reserves, wildlife parks across the country from 17 lakhs to 46 lakhs just in 10 years. So it's, um, it's doubled uh, or probably even tripled if you look at the data now. And one of the places which is very close to my heart and where I've spent a lot of my time is Ranthambor, Ranthambor National Park in Rajasthan. I'm sure many of you tiger lovers have been to this place. And, um, and this place is an island and it's an island full of tigers. There's close to 50 adult tigers, probably close to 70 tigers in Ranthambore National Park right now. And one of the most famous tigers from Ranthambore, unfortunately, sadly died a few years ago, Machli. She is known, she's, she's a legend because she has brought the population of tigers in Ranthambore back um, from in 2004 and 2005 when it was very low to a very healthy population to what it is now, 60 to 70 tigers. And Ranthambore is home to many of the legends. It's called the Land of Legends. And um, she lived for nearly 20 years. And uh, the last time I saw her was in 2015 when I took this image when she was already old and pushed out to the fringes of the park. But she sired many uh, litters of cubs across, the, uh, across uh, Ranthambore. Uh, the cubs have now inherited most parts of the park and they've been the subject of many of the films that are, that are being made. I was there five years ago filming a documentary and I spent a lot of time uh, in Ranthambore. And the documentary is out now. It's called Wild Cats of India. And there's one sequence of, um, of Machli and her cubs in the park. Um, so there is, of course, a lot of pressure of tourism. And one of the things that people always ask me, ask me is, now, 
how bad is it or is it is it okay for the tigers and having spent a lot of time there you can see that the tigers have almost accepted tourists as part of their ecosystem they know that these people come you know there's a lot of um, shouting and screaming and excitement when you do see a tiger people are standing on the vehicles with their cell phones trying to take uh, take an image but then you see the tiger just going about its daily life walking on the road sometimes even with its cub and what what you realize is that um, the tigers are not aggressive and they're not charging at the vehicle or doing anything rowdy that you think a wild animal would do so the only thing i would ask of people going to these places to see these animals is to be a tiger in that be calm be patient be a responsible citizen there's no need for screaming and shouting when you see a tiger the tiger's going to be there longer as long as you are there quiet and you absorb that moment let it soak in and 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 just allow that moment to remain in your mind and what i try to remind people is that it's not always about the the picture it's not always about getting the best shot it's about experiencing the moment of being there next to the biggest cat in the world so allow that moment to just sink in and when you do that not only do you enjoy that experience even more yourself everyone around you also experiences that moment and uh, takes it takes it in so that's ranthambore far on the the western side of the tigers range in india and then far in the east you have kaziranga a completely different experience those of you who may have not visited that part of india i definitely encourage you to to take a to take a trip it's um, it's remote you uh, one of the gateways to get to kaziranga is through pohati in assam and once you land there it's about another 5 6 hour drive to the east and when you get to kaziranga you'll realize that it's not your typical tiger landscape that most people are used to this is an amazing landscape full of giants and when i say giants i'm talking about animals like rhinos kaziranga supports the highest density of rhinos in the world and it also supports one of the highest densities of tigers in the world but to see a tiger in kaziranga is almost next to impossible it may have the highest number of tigers but to see one is a challenge as a matter of fact the grassland is so tall that it even hides elephants now you can see that the grass in the back of this magnificent tusker is higher than the back of an elephant so if an elephant is walking in that grassland you will not see it so to try to see a tiger there is one of the most challenging things to do and i spent a lot of time in this area documenting the different seasons the brown the summer months and in the monsoon months where this area gets flooded and it turns absolutely green and to see this to see these animals in this landscape it's definitely one of the most um, a fulfilling things that i've seen and one of the most fulfilling experiences that i've had of actually spending time and documenting tigers was when i filmed this tiger feeding on a rhino carcass uh this is extremely rare and this was almost 10 years ago that i took this image with a camera trap and um, it shows the two epic animals in this landscape the rhino and the tiger as a matter of fact i went to kaziranga to make a film called kaziranga land of the rhino and i saw so many tigers there that i named the documentary 
Karanga, the land of the rhino, and the tiger. So the interaction of the two animals is what that whole documentary was about. Um, but of course, it didn't happen on the first day. It took me seven days before I could even spot this, this tiger coming to feed on the rhino carcass. And the tigers here are incredibly large. I mean, uh, I remember, I mean, of course, they, they, they feed on a diet of wild water buffalo. Uh, they have uh, swamp deer, uh, rhino. Uh, that's a rare meal, of course. But uh, it, uh, spending time documenting the big animals and the big carnivore. And it's a place where you also have the king cobra. Of course, my own journey of documenting tigers began in southern India. And this is one of the first tigers I saw in a place called Kabini in Nagarhole National Park. And I was sitting at a, at a water hole when this large male tiger showed up. And one of the things that I want to bring in at this point is that the amount of money that comes into the country is staggering. Now, if you look at just facts and figures, places like um, uh, Drantambore, uh, uh, the forest department earns over 20 crores per year just with people coming to see the tiger. And it, the numbers vary in different uh, parts and different places, but the draw of people coming in is definitely to see this animal. And one should understand that there's few other places anywhere in the world. There's no other place that you can actually see tigers like you can in India. Perhaps a little bit in Nepal, but apart from Nepal, the only other country, the main country, the biggest stronghold for tigers is here in India. And places like um, Kabini in Nagarhole, Maharashtra, Bandhavgad um, in Madhya Pradesh, all of these places support tigers in good numbers. And the amount of revenue that comes in is not just to the forest department, but there's a huge trickle down effect. As a matter of fact, uh, people living alongside tiger reserves also earn a, a good amount of revenue. In one recent estimate of, um, uh, uh, of which tiger is of Bandhavgad, I think it's estimated that tigers draw in up to 166 crores of revenue in, in Madhya Pradesh. And that is incredible to think that this animal has the ability to draw in all these people to come to see, to glimpse a tiger. And that is reason for hope because without that tiger in those places, it would be very hard for those places and the people living alongside and around these places to earn that kind of revenue. So the tiger has become an animal that not just is awe-inspiring, but it's also bringing in survival for people living alongside, living around the tiger reserves, and they depend on these animals. So it's very important for us to keep space for these tigers. And it's not just tigers. This is an image by a friend of mine who has uh, a peacock, a tiger, and elephants all in one frame. And this is from Mudumalai National Park in uh, Tamil Nadu. And you can see that these are the three epic, uh, iconic animals in India. The peacock, the tiger, and the elephant, all in one frame. So India's diversity is astounding. We are one of the most diverse countries in the world. There are four biodiversity hotspots across the country. And the tiger is, of course, the uh, epic animal that can, that can like draws people in and hopefully it'll convert people to become ambassadors for all of the different kinds of creatures 
that live here. And we made a documentary recently called Wildcats of India. And during the process of making Wildcats of India, I realized that India is not just home to the tiger, it's also home to 15 species of cats across the country, big cats and small cats. That's more species of felines in one country, more species of felines than any other place in the world. So that itself is something that we need to be very proud about. And that is something we need to strive to protect. The tiger is the apex animal. It's an umbrella species. And under the law of the tiger, many of the other cats also survive. But even if the tiger didn't exist in a certain landscape, we need to protect those landscapes for clouded leopards, fishing cats, leopards, lions, jungle cats, whatever it is, because each one of these are carnivores and each one of these species deserves to survive just because every one of these cats are awe-inspiring. I mean, look at this. This is the black panther and then you have bird. They're both the same species, but the melanistic leopard is also another major draw for tourists uh, who come in now to Kabini to see the Black Panther. And then you have species like the clouded leopard. You may never see this animal in the wild. And one of the last strongholds for this species is in Dampa. Dampa is a tiger reserve. And that's where you have a good population of clouded leopards. It may not have tigers, but does that mean that that tiger reserve should not exist. It still needs to exist, maybe as a clouded leopard reserve, but it is the top predator in that ecosystem. And even if it wasn't for the tiger, the place needs to be protected in order to preserve the clouded leopard. And it's not just the big cats I'm talking about. High up in the Himalaya, you have species that very few people even know about, the palaces cat this tiny grumpy looking cat. It's found, it's a little speck in the mountains, very difficult to find and see in the wild. But protecting these landscapes means that you're also protecting habitat for the little unknown species. And under the umbrella of the tiger, you have amazing species like the great hornbills, that uh, live in the rainforest. And the point that I want to make is that India is home to everything from ants and praying mantises to elephants. It's an amazing assembly of life that we need to protect. The tiger is definitely the draw. It draws you in. But once you fall in love with the tiger, you need to open your mind and your heart to fall in love with all of the other animals that live under the umbrella of the tiger. And that's what I hope this does. And we have another short video clip that kind of like makes this point. So if I uh, actually let me go ahead and finish my talk and then why he can play that last piece of that video. Um, so the future of tigers depends on us. All of us need to come together to protect the last few places. If you look at tiger reserves and wildlife parks, uh, protected areas across India, we're talking about a very small portion of the country. 5% of the country is set aside as national parks, tiger reserves, wildlife sanctuaries. What we must do as citizens of this country, we need to be responsible tourists. And if we are in love with the tiger, which I hope all of you are, we need to come together, unite to protect this last 5% of India's natural heritage. And we must not let it go because this is what tourism draws huge amounts of revenue and tiger tourism draws, uh, we're talking about numbers in the thousands of crores 
for people coming in to see the tiger. And short-sighted development can affect uh, the last populations of these tigers. So we need to come together to protect that last 5% and maybe even increase it by connecting corridors uh, of different landscapes and increase the population of tigers and let people come into the country to enjoy this animal and go away inspired, go away as ambassadors for the country, for tigers and all of the other species under the umbrella. And I love this one image where perhaps you may have not seen the tiger because you went to some of these parks many times, but don't worry, don't be disappointed. The tiger has probably seen you. And when you go to one of these places, remember, that nobody can assure you a tiger. And that's the fun of tracking a tiger in the wild. I hope all of you have enjoyed this session and uh, we can go ahead and play that last vid clip right about now. Thank you all. So Sandesh, while we wait for um, Vaidehi to run the video, there are some questions that have been coming and probably we can quickly sure. take them. People have asked that, is there yeah. a provision for night safaris in any of the parks? Um, no, no, there are no places where you can officially do any kind of night safari. Uh, the uh, tigers, you can actually see them really well in the daytime and um, you don't really there's no real need to have a night safari to see a tiger okay great and i think uh, that's where the phrase that you sort of ended with perhaps you may not have seen me but i've seen you so you don't want to be lurking in the dark there i think you'd rather go in the day you don't want to be the early morning breakfast of the tiger right <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, some viewers asked about the white tiger in India. Um, so there, there's actually one recent record of an of an animal in Kaziranga with very few stripes on it, but it's not actually white. Uh, but in Reva, uh, or many years ago in Madhya Pradesh, they had um, um, a few tigers that were white. But um, at this point in time. There are no white tigers that I can recall in, in India, but there are almost, almost black tigers in Orissa, in Simlipal, where there are heavily striped tigers, which are almost black, not entirely, but those are, uh, those do exist. Also, a lot of questions around which are the best months to go around the different, some of the major uh, parks. That's a very good question. Um, uh, I would say that the winter months are very good. Uh, January, Feb, March, um, uh, in most places across the country, that's a very good time. Uh, monsoon, most of the tiger reserves are closed uh, between June to October. So the parks reopen, most of the parks in Central and North India reopen are about October. So November, December, would also be a good time. But the optimal best time is December, Jan, Feb. Okay, now uh, I'm gonna of course ask you a couple of more questions, but before doing that, viewers, I must remind you of something very exciting that our own uh, Honorable Prime Minister had uh, ventured last August in 2019, when he went uh, on a journey with Beer Grills to the Jim Corbett National Park and there is a video on that, the man versus wild, where the Honorable Prime Minister himself actually made weapons with bamboo, rode a boat, and went on this wild adventure. And, uh, and there is a very nice uh, takeaway, I think, that was given out by Beer Grills out of that particular 
sojourn or an adventure journey that they did was the why it reminds us that we need each other and that together we are stronger. So I think that that's the kind of adrenaline rush that uh, these kind of trips bring. And you guys, if you haven't seen, seen that video, do have a look where our own Honorable Prime Minister in all the gear of the sanctuary is with beer grills and so much adrenaline got generated, I'm sure, in that uh, journey. But uh, again, coming back but to some questions around the tiger that um, as we move forward, uh, what, what would be your one message is one question and the other, people want to hear from you that when you came into an eye-to-eye -eye contact with the tiger, what happened? So, um, I think I closed my eyes. <laughs> but I remember while filming uh, a tiger in Kaziranga, um, we were so close to it that I didn't want to actually see it with my eyes. So I only looked at it through the camera. And one look of the tiger down the barrel of the lens, its gaze is so striking that it'll just lock on and it can be quite unnerving for anyone, especially if you are on foot. So um, I think it's advisable that people stay in the safety of their vehicle and experience it from a vehicle. But uh, yeah, seeing a tiger on foot when you're actually in the field, it's one of the most amazing experiences I have ever had. So viewers, while for all other conversations, we say make eye to eye contact, but here the rules are of the game are very, very different. So learn to respect uh, the very elegant and the very powerful uh, tiger. I have one more thing which I promised my viewers for, and I will come back, Sandesh, to you for a couple of questions. I promised to viewers last time that in India, we have the tradition of Aditi Deva Bhava. What is that? Why do we use it? Well, for all those who know and for all those who do not know about it, it's a Sanskrit phrase where we, it literally translates into guest is God. It sort of defines the dynamism and the warmth between the host-guest relationship. The phrase comes from the Taittiriya Upanishad. It's part of the tradition of uh, Matru Dev Bhava, Pitru Dev Bhava, Acharya Dev Bhava, and Atiti Dev Bhava. Be one for whom the mother is God. Be one for whom the father is God. Be one for whom the teacher is God. Be one for whom guest is God. I'm sure I do not need to remind all our uh, viewers that in India, we hold our parents like gods in the highest uh, elevated, uh, venerated uh, you know, form. And the teacher, our guru, is also placed at the same pedestal. And so the guest is also placed on the same pedestal. In Hinduism, the personal God is worshipped in a five-step puja. Of course, there are many other longer and more ritual-based pujas, but there is one which is a five-step-based one. And it's called the Panch Opchar Puja, where I'm sure viewers as guests, when you've gone to hotels or homestays, and even in our weddings, or when we have special guests coming home, we actually go through this tradition of a thali, a tray, where there is fragrance in the form of a dhu. There is a little lamp, the deep, which is about the light and the warmth. There is something to eat. There'll all be a sweet meat in that. It'll be a laddu or a barfi or a mitai. And there is also the tradition of the rice, the tilak, the, the, what we put on the forehead with the vermilion paste. There is a few grains of rice that are always attached onto the forehead. It's a highest form of welcome in our Hindu home tradition. And of course, not to forget the flower offerings, the pushpa, which is a gesture of goodwill. So that's why this whole phrase of Aditi Deva Bhava, that's where it loosely comes from. I had promised last time to share with all of you where it came from and what it means. But today, going back to the, the man versus the wild and uh, how to enjoy tiger tourism in the times to come. Uh, as soon as the world opens, and it is just about beginning to open in India, on Monday, partially the flights are coming back. The lockdown is easing off. 
and soon you shall be moving away from virtual space to real space. So if we are looking at travel, Sandesh, in let's say August, because there will be a long weekend around the 15th of August, where would you think our viewers in different parts of the country could be going to? Ooh, that's a tough question. Now let's see, August, that would mean the monsoon is well underway and set in a lot of places. So usually parks in uh, the south are still open. Uh, I know that Nagarhole and uh, Kabini and these places in Karnataka, uh, a lot of places are open during the monsoon. So that would definitely be one of the places that I would go to at this point. And of course, in uh, Tamil Nadu, Mudumalai, there's places in uh, Anamalais. Uh, the Western Ghats would be an amazing place if you like rain. That would be the time to really enjoy uh, rain. And like I said, you know, one of the things that I want people to take away is that tigers may be an amazing draw, but it shouldn't all be just about tigers. Once people fall in love with tigers, I want them to go away from just tiger reserves and go to some of the smaller places with amazing biodiversity. You know, there's places in the foothills of the Himalaya where you may not see a tiger, but you'll definitely be uh, enriched by seeing amazing insects and moths and you know, crazy cool creatures uh, in the Western Ghats, frogs, amphibians, uh, reptiles. So the tiger, I think, is a way of for people to open up into other aspects of the natural world. And when they can do that, it'll also help reduce pressure on the precious few tiger reserves that are very popular and, and bring tourism spread it out in smaller numbers to other places. And that's what I really hope that uh, the tiger can do for us. Yes, I think that's a very, very valid uh, point that you made. Uh, because when we look at the kind of diversity and the biodiversity that we have in India, I was again, I get, as I said, in most of my webinars, I say that, that I get so humbled with the offerings that our beautiful country has. Viewers, we have 350 mammals that are listed, 1224 birds, 197 amphibians, 408 reptiles, 2546 fish, fishes, 15,000 flowering plants. And these are only the ones that are documented and God knows how many of them are not even documented. So clearly our country is, is blessed. And let's try and work together and live together with nature and work together to preserve the, the sheer beauty. And we keep saying that the incredible India, the Atulya Bharat, and in all our webinars, our effort is to remind all of you that Dekhi apna desh, itna sundar hai aapka desh. So do not uh, forget to see the world. We do not want you to not travel the world, but please see your own beautiful country. And in that process, encourage the locals to, to revive and to work around their homestays, the local cuisines, the local arts and the local crafts and the cultures of each place. Every time that you go into any part of your country, Remember that in so many ways you're contributing to the society and the economy and the cultural upgradation and the maintenance of heritage and culture of our beautiful country. And uh, before we end, I have uh, going to ask you, Sandesh, again, uh, one last final message because you spend hours and hours in the forests. And uh, what would be your message to everyone, particularly as we come to uh, sort of the mid or the later part of dealing with COVID and we're all looking at uh, going back to traveling very soon. Uh, uh, sorry, what was that question again? So I just wanted to ask you that for, from all those hours that you have spent in the forests and in the nature, as we are sort of ready to go back and travel back, what would be your message to all people wanting to travel back? I think it's um, very important for all of us to understand the uh, seriousness of um, COVID and coronavirus and, and be responsible about that. And also um, uh, be, as res be very responsible as a tourist. Once everything goes back to 
normal. I think we probably will never go back to normal. It's going to be the new normal that everybody is talking about. And in that new normal, I think it's very important for us to be responsible tourists, responsible citizens, um, uh, uh, not just go to these places to just see the tiger, but also contribute to conservation, contribute to the cause of conservation, because we want these animals to not just survive for our generation. We want them to survive for our children, for our grandchildren into the future. And the only way that we can ensure their future is to come together in this new normal that we are about to get, go into and unite as one and help protect the tiger by helping create corridors and no matter what, keep that last little 5% intact. We can't let any of these places go under the ax. We need to preserve them, conserve them into the future. And that's probably my biggest message to, to everyone is to really unite because in unity, we have the strength to conserve these last wild places. And we need them, not just for the tiger, for our own future. So I think that's, that's a very important message. And when we say the new normal, in fact, we hope that it, this has been one of the major learnings of COVID for all of us, that somewhere probably as humanity, we were uh, overstepping the, take the taking away from the nature and not really working in a more sustainable framework. Time to reboot, time to re-engineer, time to rethink, and time to coexist in a more healthy manner. We will try, viewers, to run the video which uh, Sandesh has brought for us. If we are unable to, please excuse us because technology has its own uh, challenges. However, uh, for all those uh, viewers who keep queuing in, I want to say a big, big thank you for encouraging us, for being a part of our journey of the Ekop Nadesh. And in case you miss, or in case you want to tell your friends and family about these videos, the videos sit as a repository on the Ministry of Tourism's website. They are a YouTube format, so you can see them anywhere, anytime, on a phone, on a laptop, on an iPad, whichever way you want to do that. In case you do decide to travel to any of the destinations which we've covered, you can just revisit our videos for those few handy hints that we leave in our uh, videos. And also do visit the website of Incredible India. It has lots to tell you about. And uh, as always, I am reminded and keep reminding all of you, as the lockdown eases, we must not drop our sense of caution and care. Do keep wearing the mask. Do keep washing your hands. Do maintain the social distance and respect the laws of nature. Those are uh, the takeaways from COVID. On Saturday, we are going to take you to a very different journey. We're going to take you cycling. We're going to take you on the two-wheeled bicycle and bicycle through India and see the incredible and Atulya Bharat in a very, very different format. So, tab tak, dekhte rahiye humare saath, humara bohat hi sundar apna desh. In the meantime, where they he, if you can run the video for us, that would be fantastic. The viewers, NEGD, Sandesh, thank you so much for being with us and thank you so much for bringing the tiger to us. I'm also reminded of jungle, jungle, pata chala hai, Mowgli paida hua hai. So keep viewing us, keep watching us, keep encouraging Dekho Apna Desh series. And now for the video, and see you on Saturday, 11 a.m. on a cycle. Thank you. Everybody is a stakeholder, from the guy who patrols the beats to the, uh, to the ranger, to the guides who serve in the parks, to the lodges that are around the park, the naturalists, the forest department. So everybody has a stake in the well-being of the park. If the park was not there, if the park was not healthy, we lost the tiger, then none of this would exist. Tiger is such a powerful and charismatic animal that we should be using tiger as a bait to draw people in to the world of wildlife. Tiger tourism is not just about tigers. It's about so many other beautiful creatures like these which share the tiger's kingdom.
If India lost tigers, they'd feel that there's no point in conserving anything else. I think it would be a, a, a huge spiritual loss as well to lose something so iconic. We lose tigers. I can't uh, imagine that thing also. Um, we must do everything we can to preserve them, I guess. I don't want to go to a zoo and look at it. It has to be open in the wild where it belongs.